Hello everyone and welcome back to my Realism Overhaul series in Kerbal Space Program 0 .90 Beta. In this episode, I am going to retry the Rincewind mission to land a probe on the surface of the moon. This is of course a high tension mission and I failed the last time by a very thin margin. I've made some improvements to this including uh, slightly reducing the battery size, reconfiguring the solar panels so that they're more efficiently placed as you can see and also uh, re-weighting some of the, the stages, uh, on, well at least on the Relina stage, uh, figuring out exactly how much of, well I mean I think this is still the same, but I've uh, trimmed up this stage in particular. And so hopefully that will suffice to uh, solve the problems and to give us more Delta V. There's nothing I can do about reshaping the Rincewind stage because it's already at the limit of its avionics. I'd have to put on another controller in order to uh, do anything with it, uh, you know, make it larger. Right now it's at the very limit. This is at the very limit as well. So, so yeah, that's the situation. But otherwise, I think uh, we'll have a better shot if I remember to use uh, fine controls to manage the RCS. So yep, that is the situation and we will try once again. Maybe it'll work, maybe it won't. It depends on my piloting skills and depending on how well we approach the moon. So I mean uh, all of these, uh, the lunar transit stages getting into orbit and the initial ascent is all shared delta V if you will. Uh, so you know Using more delta V at one part, for instance launch, uh, will result in less delta V for the remainder of the mission, right? At any point, if we're less efficient than we could be, then that will hurt our delta V for the remainder of the mission, right? So that is the trick. Anyway, uh, yep, that's the shape of things. Let's just take it out of launch pad and see if it works. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, it is a nighttime launch, of course, because we're still in the same time of year. Uh, in a different time of year, if we sort of time warped half a year, it'd be a daytime launch because the relative position of the sun would be would be kinder to us. But anyway, uh, we have, of course, we could do an off-plane transfer, but that might be a little bit more delta V, and right now we don't exactly have a lot of margin. I did add ambient light adjustments, so I have turned it up in order to uh, get a better view of the vessel. Now I will zoom out to get lesser of a view because I also want lesser of a sound. Um, we should be at Cape Canaveral. I hope we're at Cape Canaveral. It usually resets to Cape Canaveral every time. So, yep. That, oh yes, inclination is Cape Canaveral's inclination, so that's all right. Okay, so uh, here we go, throttle up, SAS is on. We should be all topped up because I turned on the pumps while time warping. And yep, looks good to me. All right, here we go. Uh, what? Insufficient avionics? Uh, well, you know, the VAB said I had enough avionics. Um, do I have enough avionics now? Because, like, that's 0.046 tons. I think we burned all of that off, like, just a few seconds ago. What do you think? Uh, can we control this now, or can we not control this now? Oh, is, uh, does it lock... I think it might have locked it completely. Hold on, let me try and execute this roll. Well, okay, Smart ASS might... Hmm. I don't know. You know what? Uh... Once we get clear of the KSC, I'm going to just shut it down and test that I can stage. Maybe. It's not worth trying to go very far. It's going to be a long time before these boosters run out. I want to at least see what's going on. I've got enough cash. Uh, it's not like I'm pressed for uh, funds here now. So, 
let me just test what's going on here. Okay, so now I'm going to shut off. Uh, as expected, I don't have any control. I, I can't shut off the stage. I've got control through Smart ASS, but I don't actually have control control. Yeah, I don't have control. I can't even turn on SAS. Okay, um, who cares? I'm gonna abandon this flight. Oh, it'll be lost, yeah. Okay, well, it's gonna be lost anyway now. Okay, witness, it, it says avionics okay, but it is in fact lying to me. So I need to dump 0.046 tons, if you can believe that. Um, probably, let's just, let me just see. Uh, I want every bit I can get, but okay, that should do the trick. Let's see. Hopefully that didn't uh, turn down our delta V by too much. I don't think so. Adjusting that bottom stage by such a trivial amount shouldn't be a big deal. Before we do any Mars missions, we'll have to put satellites up in order to be able to communicate with Mars. I'll have to remember that. Okay, so throttle up, SAS on, and let's see if I've satisfied the thing so that we can actually head for the moon. Okay, I press space bar. Uh, it still shows my stage locked, I think. Yeah, it does. <laughs> okay, well, here I go. Let's let's quit the program and I'll come back in. Wow, no dice. Oh wait. It was it was purple just a second ago. Now it's green. Or uh, purple or what? I think it's fluctuating. It says green now, but it's it's sort of blinking on and off. Don't know what that's about. Are we so borderline that uh that I can't decide whether we're allowed to launch or not. <laughs> okay, well let's try it while it's green. And here, we, oh, let me get some distance. Okay, here we go. Oh, it's orange. Okay, now it's purple. Is that okay? Or lilac. I don't know, whatever color you like. But with that going on, I don't know if I can stage or not. It didn't give me the message this time. Let me turn this off and check. Okay, I can activate SAS. Well, that's at least something. Okay, ambient light adjustment kept the setting through the restart. So that's interesting to note. Okay, here we go. We hold at this pitch until we get through the region of heating. I presume it's like the ozone layer or something like that. I know there's a place in the atmosphere where it actually gets hotter for a bit before uh, it continues cooling off. I presume that's where we get all the heating as well. Relative inclination to the moon is pretty darn minimal, so if we could actually get this launch to work out, we'll be in good shape. Hmm, decouplers don't seem to be cooling off very much. Well, I'm going to 35 anyway. Oh, now it's cooling off. Very interesting. Okay, moment of truth. Can I stage? Okay. Alright. Okay, alright. So we're good to go. Oh, I know. I, I think I dumped some... MMH and N204 from the settling fuel on the RL-10 stage. I thought it reduced the size of the tank. I didn't think I just emptied it. Hmm. 
But, oh, maybe uh, because I turned on the fuel pumps on the launch clamps when time warping, as well as the electric charge, it might have filled up the half empty MMH N204 tank on the RL10 stage. And that might have been what happened. Okay, we can go to 30 now. And that's why we were overweight. Okay, I think we should dump fairings as soon as possible, so here we go. And is the antenna on Action Group 1? Yeah, I should leave it down until we get to 100 kilometers. Okay, well, looking at it now, I don't think we could get a better trajectory so far than we, we've gotten. So, looking good. Alright, getting ready for core stage separation here. Okay, set. And ignition of the RL-10 is good. We've got another 1,800 meters per second or so left to burn. And it's going to take the RL-10 some time to manage that. But we've also got some time to apoapsis and we've got an okay pitch. Possibly I should go to 10 degrees. But we'll see how it flushes out. Now things would be a lot easier if I just tossed a reaction wheel on this thing. It'd make it heavier. There's definite downsides to using a reaction wheel, but it'd make it easier. We don't have a reaction wheel anywhere on here. If I fail this time, I'm, I'm just going to redesign from the get-go and probably opt for a different launcher. We've, we've got engines that we haven't used. And I think I'm, uh, I, will, uh, I won't retire the Telemon 5, but uh, we, we can move on from it temporarily and wait till there's an appropriate payload. Of course, I've already built up the, the Kerbald Moon or Flyby mission around the Telemon 5, so that will launch on it. Really, considering there's uh, battery power enough for six days here, maybe I don't need the solar panels at all, or I really should reduce the battery more. Probably the thing to do is to reduce the battery more. As is quite normal, we will pass apoapsis during this final phase of getting into orbit. Okay, good. Leveling off at the right time here. You can see vertical speed is going back up and we'll hope it will hit about zero meters per second right when we we finish our orbit. That is the general goal. Okay, vertical speed is going up. Let's have pitch at zero and I'm getting ready to shut it down. Okay, 201 by 197. Okay, and we've got 2,525 meters per second left in this stage. We need about 3,000, let's say 3,100 to get to the moon, hopefully. It's not going to be too much more than that. Alright, let me plot for it now. Okay, 60 kilometers. Thought I'll make that exactly, but but we'll try. Okay, so uh, so we're, we're, we're going good. We're going good. Um, let me shut off the tanks for the probe. And so it's it's here that I reduced the MMH and N204 in order to save mass. Um, let's see, find controls, RCS. I can't seem to, oh, I'm getting it to move slightly, okay. That's fine.
I trust that I actually produced some. Yes, it does. I would just want to check that there was actually burn from the MMHN and 204 when I did the fine control RCS maneuver. And yes, it does consume MMHN and 204, just not as much. Seems to have a little bit of trouble getting it to the maneuver node using just fine controls, though. Yeah, it's it's not doing very well. Here, let me let me. I'll do it. I'll use SAS to stabilize instead. Okay, we look all lined up and stable. Okay, to the maneuver node. Now, if we have to do a fuel settling burn with the RCS, then that will have to be without fine controls, obviously. The fine controls won't give enough of a push in order to settle the fuels down. So far we haven't had to do much fuel settling. I wonder if engine igniter is going to get updated for 1.0 since it didn't get updated for beta. Let physics stabilize. How is it? Very stable. Off we go. Gonna let uh, Smart ASS point out the node using this. We gotta take RCS off. I'll have to use the RL10 to maneuver towards the node. Okay, the RL10 portion of the Relina is about to run out here. And I'm going to unlock this tank in preparation for that. Okay, here we go. Set. And continue burn. Gonna have to turn on RCS, but we'll keep fine control on. RCS in order to stabilize, of course. None of these engines have gimbling. So there's our probe. I'm gonna... oh... Uh, I sense that Smart ASS is having trouble here. You know what? Forget that. Uh, SAS is probably a little bit better than Smart ASS on this, on this score. But I'm gonna do some manual maneuvering. I also want to rotate in order to get the panels right. I think the sun must be... Oh, is that the moon right there? I can barely see it. Where is the sun? Ah, the sun is behind us, that's why. Okay. So I think we're doing very well. We've got a lot of fuel left over in this stage in order to get into orbit around the moon and then start the descent burn. Okay, here we go. Okay, uh, maybe I can just use the RCS in order to get closer there. Fifty... okay, well it's going up now again. Stop that, stop that. Stop. Okay, well it keeps going up whenever I... Okay, uh, maybe I should turn RCS off? Ah, okay, good. So, 60 kilometers there. Okay, so we've got the transfer we wanted, but I bet once I turn to have the solar panels facing the sun, it's going to... It's going to mess with that. Okay. Oh, look! Uh, we can actually see North America at night because of ambient light adjustment. I think maybe I'm overdoing it on the ambient light adjustment there. Let's tone that down. Yeah, I mean, of course the sun is going to be blocked by earth for quite a portion of the journey but anyway on we go okay here we go and what is our periapsis now 465 okay right oh, time delay on the SAS there's some things that are delayed and some things that are not Must remember that. Okay, 40 kilometers sounds fine. 
Okay, let's get to Periapsis. I believe we should still have line of sight with Earth at Periapsis. It's one of the benefits of not going around the other way. Okay, when an approach. Okay, here we go. Alright, we've got orbit, but it's a very loose orbit right now. Still got some time to burn here. Okay, we're getting to orbit. Let me bring up the landing bit of Mechjeb here. Okay, that's good enough. 60 by 38. Certainly no need to circularize. We're going to be going into a landing trajectory soon anyway. And as with last time, I'm going to go into that trajectory as soon as we get line of sight with Earth on the other side. We've got about 500 meters per second left on this stage, which is excellent. Hopefully the resolution of the terrain is such that the tiny little rinse wind lander is not going to hit any particular boulders or rough terrain. It's landing on its engine anyway, so it's not like I was planning on making it particularly well balanced on touchdown. I thought we had a thermometer here somewhere, but I don't see it. Oh, there it is. Yeah, I think it's clipped. Oh, anyway. Let us focus here. Focus. Okay, that will do. And it looks like we are going to be hitting... Ooh, wouldn't it be nice to hit that crater right there? That might be ambitious. It's basically fine controls for the wind here. Here's our little Agena with its payload. Pseudo Agena. Doesn't have the Agena engines, just the Agena controller. Okay, I'm gonna do a little bit more of a descent here. And let's just slightly overshoot the. I guess that's our target, yeah. Well, I'm gonna start trying it now, and we'll see where it goes. I guess we could wait a little bit longer. Um, here, let's let's start from this view. Ooh. Yeah, well, that definitely brings the orbit in. So here's how it's working out. Our controllers don't have as much electric charge as, as I'd like, but I'm sure they have more than I need. Okay, before I decouple, I'm gonna activate the engines here, uh, activate the tanks here, because otherwise we're going to have no stability. Uh, oh, this already seems to be a little bit wiggly. Okay, those are there. Alright, so we should have stability and I staged. Okay, good, and I'm gonna stage this engine. But I'm gonna throttle down right now. Okay. Come on, we don't need this trunk. All right. There's there's no actual throttle on this engine. I don't know why it pretends. It always pretends. Oh, there's the crater. That's our target right there. Let's see if we overshoot it. Okay, not bad. It looks like we are going to hit this crater here. Definitely. Now it's a matter of not hitting it too hard. 
And fine control seems to be going giving me giving me okay authority on this. Every time I go to map view it zooms out like a lot. We can wait for the suicide burn countdown to progress a little bit. Just coast along. Sort of aim dead center at that crater. Probably won't be landing dead center, but it's pretty good. Gotta remember to pay attention to the true altitude, not that total total lie up there. Okay, I'm gonna start now. Of course, pitched up uh, from retrograde because I want to come down straight down on the final bit. I don't want to have any angle going on. Okay, so here's the part where the fact that the engine is just off or on is going to annoy me. Yeah, kill the horizontal velocity first at about uh, 15 seconds here. Yeah, let's go. Well, it would be a lot harder if remote tech was really stopping me from doing the small burns. I just have to do a last minute burn in that case, but now I can do small burns. That's fine. It's got some extra wobble to it. Oh shoot, come on. Oh crud. Okay, wow, that was a weird last minute stuff, but... Oh, don't bury yourself. <laughs> Oh, come on. Okay, let me get the log x-ray date of it. Come on. Alright. I wonder if the antenna works when it's buried in the winter surface. Let us transmit data and find out. Uh, okay, well, we sent it. Okay, so Explore the Moon is complete. Now the thermometer. Okay, transmit that data. I believe we can do a probe report. Uh, probe situation report. Yes, report in from the moon's major craters. Several of the probe's primary sensors have been rendered inoperable by dust. Well, the way it's facing. Shift back to shift to backup systems. We do have backup systems, right? Actually, uh, we have a second probe core. Okay. Anything else? Was there something else here? I don't think so. I don't think we get anything special from the other probe core. Okay, well, uh, the landing wasn't exactly the way I envisioned it, but uh, we made it. The probe is on the moon. It can, maybe it can write itself. This is a weird surface. Nah, it's, it's gonna just be messed up. We'll, we'll leave it be. We'll leave it be. It'll potentially still get electric charge using the solar panels, but there won't be enough to supply for very long. Alright, so rinse wind, the lunar lander, lunar lander is successful, and next time I guess we'll have to turn to sending a Kerbal on a flyby mission around the moon Though we'll, we should pay attention to our contracts, we'll have to see what contract they actually give us. But that will be my tentative goal before I take a look at the contracts, alright? So, with this achievement, thank you for watching. If you enjoyed this video, please do press like. If you have any comments or suggestions, please leave them in the comment section below. And I'll see you next time.